boys are back in town for round one of the Premiership battle. Balmain coach Alan Jones hopes 1993 will be third time lucky. Can he repeat in rugby league the success he enjoyed in Union in the 80s? Last year, the Tigers were a fast and exciting, but ultimately unsuccessful team. Now, with the loss of the experienced Steve Roach and Gary Jack, the young bloods will have to stand up for themselves. Signed from Penrith, the dynamic Mark Geyer. Big things are expected of MG, who with new captain Paul Sirenen puts tall timber in the second row. And now at fullback, Tim Brasher should add real thrust to the back line after his performance in the World Cup final for Australia. The Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs under coach Chris Anderson come to Leichhardt after a promising but inconsistent 92. During the off season, they've been buying up big, but none bigger than Martin Bella, the powerhouse bulldozer from Manly, who's expected to graft the hard yards up the middle. Kiwi international Jared McCracken is raring to go in the centres and with Penrith's Luke Goodwin and West Jim Dimmock, it's up to inspirational captain Terry Lamb to pull it all together and get the dogs barking all the way to the semi-finals. And let's take a look at the lineups as the Balmain Tigers take the field, led out by new skipper Paul Surinan. Benny Elias, one of the former skippers, trailing him out. There goes Mark Geyer. It's a powerful lineup for the Tigers in 93. Graham Lyons, one of their new signings. At fullback, Tim Brasher. On one wing is Morvan Edwards in for the injured Clint Robertson. Jason Sinclair and Jamie Corcoran in the setters with Graham Lyons on the other wing. David Bassari is the 5'8. Will Robinson at halfback. And the forward lineup. At lock forward, Matt Munro, Mark Geyer and Paul Sirinan in the second row. Derek McVie, Ben Elias and Martin Masala the front row. Canterbury on their way out in enemy territory. Their lineup, also a very mobile one. At fullback is Luke Goodwin. On one wing is Brett Dallas. Darren Smith and Jared McCracken, the setter pair. Jason Williams on the other wing. Terry Lamb, the skipper at 5'8. Uh, Craig Pollam out of the halfback. And the forward lineup, Jim Dimmock at lock. Jason Smith and Simon Gillies in the second row. Martin Bella, Geordie Peets, and Gavin Hill, the front row. Referee for this game is Eddie Ward one of the most experienced referees in the competition and everything in readiness as we go down to Johnny Peard. Good afternoon Warren, uh, everything in readiness here, conditions on the grass excellent for football, this should be an interesting game, both sides looking for their new recruits to provide them with the impetus and to start the season on a winning note, it should be a good game. Certainly should be, Eddie Ward blows time on and Tim Brasher gets the game underway and waiting there is Terry Lamb and Brett Dallas gets his first touch of 93 in the real thing, the Premiership opener. Just 10 metres out from their own line as Polamata works it to the blind side. But the Balmain defence has them well and truly caught up in that area. Geordie Peets gets it across to Martin Bella. Tries to shrug off the tackle of Sinclair, but he's over the top of him with Bosari. Now Gavin Hill, the big Kiwi takes them on, but Serenin is up there. Enthusiastic defence, McVie in the tackle as well. 30 metres out from their own line as Goodwin gets his kick downfield. A wobbly one, and taken by Graham Lyons. And Canterbury are up inside the 10 metres from the kick. They're yeah, in front pitched, of the kicker. Yeah, very enthusiastic Canterbury defence on the downtown there. And uh, we saw Jason Smith, the brother of Darren Smith, coming up, being encroaching the 10 metre mark. So David Bassari will look for touch. He won the battle for the 5'8 spot from Paul Davis. Brian Smith in reserve grade for the Tigers today. John, this should be an interesting match. Both sides like to get the ball plenty of air. They play with plenty of width and depth. They do, Arthur. Last season they were both inconsistent, but you can never guarantee when they're going to press the buttons. They're both very positive. An early chance for Balmain as Sirenin powers up the middle but leaves it behind. The Elias pass wasn't quite there when he needed it. The timing just that fraction astray as they work the move. So Canterbury in possession on their own 20 metre line. Yeah, they uh, squandered good field position there, Balmain. And uh, as you said, it was a very poor pass by Benny Elias. Jason Smith plays it back. He was knocked over as he tried to play it. And the referee gives the penalty to the Bulldogs against Benny Elias and Serenin. 
holding him down, not allowing him to clear away and play it. Yeah, Tim, Tim is running a bit hot there, but it's a great play the ball there by Jason Smith as Paul Searon is caught in the between the uh, ruck. Looking for touch, Luke Goodwin, who was sent off in the pre-season, received a two-week suspension and a hefty fine for arguing with the referee. But he's in first grade in the fullback spot for Canterbury today as Bella puts his head down and rumbles forward. Tackle 28 metres out. Now oh, Gavin Hill are on him very quickly. Munro, was it, or McVie up very quickly on him. But all of them up inside the five. Yeah, tremendous hit by Derek McVie. The mind boggles a, a little bit in defence, John, along with Mark Geyer and Paul Searon. The yeah. Balmain Ruck will be a place to be entered at your own risk. We're better off where we are, Arthur. <laughs> it was solid work from McVie initially, trying to get out from the marker position to put some pressure on them. And there's Mark Geyer prowling around. He must have a few nerves. It's been ten months since he's played football. And I'm sure he can't wait to get this first five or ten minutes of this game over with and settle down. A very enthusiastic player at the best of times. And Gavin Hill will shoot for goal just inside the 20 metre line of the Balmain side. Hill with a 61% goal kicking average last season. And he showed he was a very fine all round footballer. Of course, the lines marked at the 10 metre intervals with a 20 metre line, not a 22. As Hill hits it well, has it got the legs? It has. And first points onto the board for Canterbury. First blood. They lead 2 0 after four minutes of play. An enthusiastic start by both teams. Yes, certainly was. And uh, Gavin Hill, former union player from New Zealand, from Wellington, I believe, uh, a rugby union background, he has made the transition quite well. Right over the black dot. Back to halfway with Tim Brasher. And this time it's Goodwin who comes forward to receive. Dallas there to take it off him. And, and Warren Canterbury uh, in the off-season purchase, Martin Bella, strictly to take the ball forward. And they've got Gavin Hill doing the same. They're two whoppers, aren't they? They're very well... The, the centre of gravity is just uh, great for this type of game. So there's Hill going on the burst now. And makes a handy 10 metres. Elias in a second marker behind McVie. Here's Martin Bella as he turns his hip. He goes right over the top of the enthusiastic tackle of Marcella. And a bit of pushing and shoving between Bella and Marcella behind the back play. Brasher knocks it backwards. He got away from Darren Smith. And still going, electrifying burst by Brasher. But he finally runs into Geordie Peets who chased hard. Shows the speed of Brasher. That was a great chasing team by Canterbury there, but he eluded a number of tackles. Elias thought about the blind side, looks back and finds Paul Sirenen. Interesting decision by Alan Jones to appoint Sirenen captain. Last season with Steve Roach in charge and Benny Elias also there to captain the side, but this year he's gone for the big Australian second rower. McVie gets over the halfway line. The last tackle coming up. In behind them is Basari, and he's in trouble, and he's hooked to ground by Jim Dimmock. Legal tackle, great tackle. That was a great chasing team. They two outed uh, the tackle, uh, the kicking game of Basari, and they came up with the tackle of Dimmock. But we see a turnover position. Terry Lamb loses it on the first tackle, but the referee go is going to put the scrum down. It wasn't that great play in the chase. Here it is, Dimmick just hooked him on the shoulder, didn't make contact with the neck, and he was <laughs> checking with the referee very quickly about it. Because last night we saw St George defeat Canberra. Confident looking St George side, but 5'8 Andrew Walker was sent off for a high tackle after being cautioned earlier in the game. And St George playing that match for 60 minutes with 12 men and still coming up with a good win. Will Robinson looks wide and there's Geyer. He steps out of a tackle, threw it on the ground. Elias there to clean up and looks wide. Good vision by Elias, gets it to Sinclair. He's certainly a very talented player, Mark Geyer, but it's his ability to off the load ball. We see a knock on by Jason Williams. Yeah, the priority, Arthur, for 
He can't have reached side. It'll be a lock guy up. He can't get his arms free. He's certainly been a tall, tall timber, John. Yeah, with Tyrannan, if they can play to their capacity, they're going to worry every side. Jason Williams being spoken to for some incident, but it doesn't lead to a penalty. Williams got out of the marker position very quickly to knock that pass down, but the referee said he was directly in front of the man playing the ball. Now in centre field, Jamie Corcoran, the former Canterbury centre, who went up to Newcastle. Now he's back with the Tigers. The surprising thing, John... Uh... Hello, he's calling out Terry Lamb here. The blood bin. Blood bin. The surprising thing is that Canterbury have elected to use Luke Goodwin with his kicking game. I would have thought that the more experienced Craig Polamata would have been given that task. Terry They're Lamb. Lucky. They've got the three three pronged uh, kicking attack there. They've got Terry Lamb, Polamata, and of course the fullback Goodwin. And there's Glenn Hughes going onto the field for Terry Lamb. Lamb with a bad gash on the cheek. No doubt he'll get some stitches into that quickly and be back on the field because Canterbury need him on the paddock. Robinson changes direction. Very quick off the mark, Will Robinson. Scored 11 tries last year. Yeah, playing mainly 5-8, but half-back will suit him, Warren. Basari kicks through. And well covered up by Luke Goodwin. Goodwin, the former Penrith player. Canterbury have made some very useful signings this year. There's a good burst now by Polamata. They've signed Martin Bella, Jim Sedaris, Jim Dimmock, Luke Goodwin, Scott Wilson, and to arrive later in the season, Gary Connolly, the British test player. And Dimmock's probably the one that can add a lot to their attack, Warren. He's just very clever with the ball, Jim Dimmock. As Pete's kicks, running wide from dummy half, down to Brasher. They were warned a moment ago of his talent. And this time they lock him up with a good chase by McCracken and Dallas. McCracken came around too early. The play the ball was hesitant and slowed him. Put a little bit of doubt into his mind, but he came around too quickly. You see the chase from the downtown and uh, he's left that ball. I think he was, although he hadn't healed the ball, I suppose. But technically, I think you could have so equally blamed, blamed Brasher. He has no right to stop in the middle of playing the ball. Well, the rule states you're supposed to play, place the ball on the deck. But, you know, he could have been accused of handling the ball in the ruck area. True enough. Also. He was waiting for his dummy half to get into position. Elias. Marcella gets to the quarter line. I guess it's a two-fifths line now, a 20-metre line. Brasher. Beats one. Left Hughes on the ground, going the wrong way with a fine step. Elias wanted a quicker play the ball. Marcella in centre field. The defence up and wraps around him. Robinson on the angle to Munro. Munro from St Gregory's at Campbelltown originally. On the last tackle. Guy, quick hands. Put ahead by Corcoran. And a heavy tackle comes in as Canterbury come up with the ball. Yeah, very well read by Brett Dallas. He came in there to stop uh, Cork on getting an effective kick in for a restart. Canterbury spending quite a deal of time around their own quarter area as Gillies is put to ground. And even at this stage, the Balmain defence seems to be a lot more solid than last year. Well, I think that's one area where they had to improve, Arthur. They've always been able to move the ball around. Back to Goodwin. And he kicks away from Brasher. Last year, Balmain finished 10th. Canterbury finished equal 7th. But they weren't that far from the final five. Canterbury just three points outside the five. Balmain four points outside the five. So the platform is there if they can improve their defence. Both teams were capable of good attack last year. Sirenin. That's exactly what you're talking about, John. Uh, it was good work by Ciro there, taking the ball up, getting a bit of impetus, but uh, they have been a little bit reluctant to take that ball up and provide that space for the classy back line. Yeah, well, look at the size of them. If they can roll on, there's another tank going up now. Quick play the ball. They can get a roll on. Gaia plays it back. Elias kicking from dummy half. It comes off the Canterbury player. 
coming off Darren Smith and bouncing into touch. It should be a Balmain feed, it is. It will be a Balmain feed, but uh, Bassari did his... Uh, was it Bassari or...? The... Oh, it was more than Edwards did his best to try and give the feed to Canterbury. Robinson with the scrum win. Bassari with a back line deep. Sinclair holds onto it. Good work. Oh, oh. Corcoran cops a great tackle from Dallas. He came in. It would have been three on one against Brett Dallas if he didn't make that tackle. He's yeah. a great little player at 18 years old, isn't he? Yeah, cash your potential check in. He's a fully fledged first grader, Dallas. And wasn't it fine deception by Jason Sinclair? Now Marcella charges straight and hard. Canterbury leading two points to nil. After 13 minutes, Elias gets it back. Will Robinson plucks it out of the air. Geyer inside to Munro. He's got support. A great pass inside to Tim Brasher. And that is a fine Balmain try. Superb football. Turning it inside and out. The support play was tremendous. The first try of the match goes to the Tigers and they lead four points to two. Just over 13 minutes of play gone. Super football by the Balmain Tigers. Some great reverse passing up the middle of the Canterbury Ruck. And there's some superb pass in. Benny Elias. And there's another offload. We see Will Robinson. But watch this pass back inside by Mark Geyer. What a great play to Masala. And back in to the ever-present Timmy Brasher. Very fine football indeed. They kept the ball alive here as three men were on top of Elias. Everyone expected the play to go the other way except Will Robinson who intercepted and that was a magnificent pass by Guy. He held it up looking on the outside, had the time to turn inside and great support by Munro and Brasher. Certainly great play by Will Robinson also. Uh, Tim Brasher finishing it off. Will Robinson with great hands. They're a very skillful team, Balmain. Certainly is, and there's that inside ball back from Masala to Timmy Brasher backing up. Some, certainly some great plays there. And Tim Brasher, a former Australian schoolboy back in 1988, now a member of the fully-fledged Australian team. He dislocated his shoulder in the trials, but he looks back to full fitness and full of confidence too. The kick to be taken by Jamie Corcoran. from a handy position, just 10 metres to the side of the posts. And this is a good looking kick. Both goal kickers landing their first shots at goal and Balmain lead by six points to two. I was converted by Danny Corcoran, who is sponsored by Phillips. A Corcoran, we're making uh, his worth shown early on with the boot. As we have another look at it, a fine try, Johnny Pearce. Oh, tremendous. And I think Benny Elias did very well then. He swiveled out of a tackle, popped the ball back. But that was the money ball, the one from Geyer inside. And, of course, Brasher was supporting again. Play underway. And Balmain, where well, they haven't spent much time inside that quarter and doesn't Seren and wind up. But hit equally well by Peach. Hughes in there too. So now a chance for Canterbury to try and assert a bit of dominance with defence. Hit hard in the opposition territory. And this is an area where Benny Elias is so clever. He just brings his forwards onto the ball. Geyer up the centre. And as you pointed out earlier, Arthur, Balmain are prepared to go up the middle. Try and pull the defence in, drive them back. Baisari with the kick. Goodwin settles under it. Plenty of chase down there and Will Robinson all over the top of him like a spider's web. Dallas. Brett Dallas, who won the botany gift. He loses the ball. Munro picks it up. And Jason Sinclair goes from this side of the field to the far side. Sees that there's an overlap there. Basari looks wide. The defence was up quickly. Sinclair was there to support him. And Palomero took a while to get up. Marcella doing his job. Straight and hard yet again. The sixth hit up for Marcelo already in the game. A Serenin, 10 metres out, staying on his feet for a long time. Chance for Balmain, only eight metres out in centre field. On the blind, McVie, out of one, out of two. He's over, can he get it down? On his back. Referee says held up. And this will be a 10 metre scrum, it's held up. And the head and the feed once again will go to Balmain. The attacking side 
getting the scrum feed, but wasn't it a great run by McVie from close range? Yeah, he's a tremendous strength, as we saw last year. He scored a, a great 40 or 50 metre try. We see. Good tackle in the end by Bella, who got across and under him. Well, he used his body, he used his legs to, to hold him up there, and we see him trying to put the ball down. The Canterbury have come up with the ball. Yeah. Corcoran dropped the ball then. It's a pity. Another five or so rucks. And this penalty's rescued Canterbury. Another five rucks down there. They've been very hard to hold out the Balmain side, playing with very, very much confidence. John, they've held possession. Uh, you know, that would be a little bit unlucky there to relinquish possession, as you said, but uh, they've certainly had some pressure on this Canterbury defence. And it's been the big boys. We see that ball popped back in by Morgan Edwards. Bad mistake by Canterbury. Um, and they'll be looking forward to Terry Lamb to get back out there and show a little bit of leadership, settle yep. them down. He's being stitched, Warren. He could be another five minutes. Well, I'm just wondering about that rule where Mer Morgan Edwards, I know he was on the field of play, but he ended up outside the field of play when he touched that ball back in to the Balmain support. So Balmain now, 22 metres out. Dominating territory so far as Gaia gets it to Basari. Neat piece of football again, Gaia working the angle with his 5'8". Robinson takes off to the blind, pops it through. I thought Graham Lyons might have been offside. Play goes on. Lyons didn't come into the play in the end as Robinson was kicking for him. And a little bit of slack play by Canterbury. It took them a long time to clean that loose ball up. They look at rattled at the moment. This is where you need the Martin Bellas and the Gavin Hills just to steady the play down. It's Darren Smith makes a few metres. Smith was also involved in preventing the try by McVie. Jason Smith. Goodwin juggles, gets it away on the last. Brasher, 30 metres out from his own line. Took it well. McCracken over the top with Polamata, the first up there. That's much better play by Canterbury. The sun breaks through. There were some showers this morning, but it's been dry through the middle part of the day and the field in perfect condition for a game of football. The Sinclair gets to the halfway. Elias, Marcella goes across field that time. Got it back to Elias, onto Basari. Canterbury back with the referee. The crowd telling him to get further back. Now it's the last tackle for Balmain. Guy to play it. He's getting involved. Basari in trouble. He had a, his own man too close in front of him initially. That held him up. Now it goes to Glenn Hughes. Looking for Smith. That was clumsy football. Good chase by Canterbury, but clumsy football by Balmain. They got in each other's road. Once again, a great pressure by the Canterbury chasers, but I thought it was bad play by Hughes. He cut away from his support. He had a bit of space down that left-hand flank. Disappointing for Alan Jones. They've controlled the ball reasonably well, Balmain, but on two kicking situations, they've, uh, they've been disrupted. Shorty Peets manages to hang onto the ball. The referee says it came off his leg as Dimmock turns it inside. 33 metres out. Polamata, the little dummy, then shot ahead himself. Last tackle, 30 metres out. Goodwin from dummy half. Puts it through. Brett Dallas is very quick. He can't hang on to it. Brasher was not going to beat him to the ball. There was no way. He was there in defence. He would have had been forced to make a, a pretty, uh, pretty good tackle here. But we see the little grubber in behind the line. We see the speed of Brett Dallas taking him to that ball. He didn't quite bend down uh, low enough, but uh, Brasher was on him. So I think that he would have uh, stopped Dallas. Neat piece of football there by the halfback or the fullback, Goodwin. <laughs> giving his winger the chance. He read it well. And already Canterbury getting through a lot more defence than Balmain. 79 tackles made to Balmain's 43. So weight of possession and certainly territory as well with Balmain. Guy are flat footed this time. The defence coming up on him quickly drove him sideways. And that's probably after what you're talking about before forcing two changeovers. We see a penalty going against Canterbury. And there's an indication of the metres gained. In fact, that says Canterbury 
have dominated, but uh, time in possession with Balmain certainly. 13 minutes to Canterbury 7. I would have thought that for the most part Balmain have spent time in Canterbury's half. Elias looks for touch, finds it just over the halfway line. Robinson gets it to Munro. And the big forwards looming up in centre field. It's Sirenen and Masella. Goes to Sirenen. Masella is the decoy. Cutting back towards the ruck. They handle him well. Good tackle by Gavin Hill. Elias ducks under one. He loses the ball. And it comes away with McCracken. Elias had managed to get halfway through. It certainly was good work by Elias, but once again they've conceded possession on the second tackle. Masella dumps the winger Dallas, who dares to venture into the forwards. Dimmock. One out, and Balmain up inside the five. Serenin penalised. Just the way they're recovering in defence, John, it uh, suggests that the Balmain big boys might be... Uh, Getting a little bit tired in defence. Well, when you've got a 2-1 ratio in possession, Arthur, it's very, very handy. It can be very misleading. You might think you're travelling well, but it's going to even out sooner or later, so they'll have a lot of work to do, the Balmain defence. But I think Guy in the side's given them a, a great option to take a lot of pressure off Benny Elias. Munro meets Bella and stops him. Now it's Hill's turn. He slips a good pass to Gillies. On to Dimmick, just held onto it. Centre field, 25 metres out. Polamata. Inside is Goodwin. Couldn't quite get the pass away in time. There are a few holes appearing up the middle of the Balmain Rush. Polamata goes wide. Sinclair intercepts. He's got 70 metres to go. Over the halfway. They're coming from everywhere. There's five Canterbury players, but the closest is a Balmain player. And over goes Sinclair. Graham Lyons was backing up inside and he came through the Canterbury pack to be in support. And what an amazing intercept and a tremendous run by Jason Sinclair from his own 20 metre line, covering 80 metres as Polamata threw the long pass, looking to get outside the defence. And they were streeted by Sinclair. Here it is with Polamata looking wide, but the man who had his eye on the ball was Jason Sinclair. There were five Canterbury players after him, coming from everywhere. Glenn Hughes is one of them there. Goodwin was another, but they didn't really look like getting close. Not even Brett Dallas. Well, it's a cruel game, rugby league. Sometimes they appear to have the numbers out wide, Canterbury, but all of a sudden, Jason Sinclair. The ball's gone straight to Jason Sinclair, and it just became a foot race from thereafter. And we see Sinclair just using that big stride. He's six foot three odd, certainly a big man, and plenty of pace. Brett Dallas there, not quite able to catch you. Alan Jones was cheering all the way. <laughs> he was ready to jump out of his seat. Can't quite see whether it turns into a smile, but I bet it did. The eyes were lighting up. And Jason Sinclair, 21 years of age, he made his first grade debut last year in round two against Canterbury Bankstown. And Corcoran will try to convert it, with Balmain leading 10 points to 2. Difficult one for Corcoran, near the touchline. Hits it well, coming around beautifully. Superb kick. And Balmain lead 12 points to 2 after 25 minutes. Great kick, Corcoran. That really lifts the side too, when you see them go over from the touchline. Um, it was the type of play, as Paul Amanda is starting to float the big pass. That's the type of play you expect from Jason Sinclair, very enterprising player. Probably not concentrating that much on defence there, he got right in between that pass. And the chase was good, but just the start was too big. Good, good stuff, it's a cruel game as Arthur said. Here comes Sirenin from the restart. Balmain with their tails up in front of their home crowd. And Geyer beats the tackle. And that's Geyer's eighth hit up of the match. And uh, Balmain have hit the ball up 36 times in the forwards compared to Canterbury's 15 times. So that indicates the uh, possession time. 
Terry Lamb is back on the field as the pass goes wide. Edwards dives back for it and manages to get hold of the ball and stay in the field of play. Good work. Yeah, Terry Lamb's had 10 stitches inserted. Warren, for his... And he's a good break. He's going to make a tackle here as he chases downfield. Marcella with a fine burst for a big front row. Showed plenty of speed. Elias to Robinson. The Canterbury players, some of them are offside. Payondo with Corcoran. He's got Munro inside. Looks for Will Robinson. He steps inside Lamb. Throws at Benny Elias. Can't control it and pull him out of there to save. Electrifying football by Balmain that came out of nothing. But the support play was there again. You see, this is the result Ladies of Balmain regaining position. The support play is there. Will Robinson cuts back inside a tackle. Another beautiful pass back into the ever present. Benny Elias, had he held that pass, it could have been cared for Canterbury. Well, it was a play that came out of nothing because the Canterbury players got in the Balmain kicker's road again and Will Robinson really put in a nothing kick and suddenly rebounds and... They come away, but the support was able to turn it into something. Very much like the Bell Golf Corp, uh, Golf Corp rubber last night. Now, penalty goes to Balmain. I should say to Canterbury. Balmain not getting away from McCracken. Those total tackles. Still well and truly in going Canterbury's way. They've had to make a lot of them. 93 to Balmain's 47. Twice as much tackling for the Bulldogs. Here's McVie all over the top of McCracken conceding the penalty. Mitch Newton getting ready. He's going to go on for Martin Bella. And there's the error count. Missed tackles by Canterbury. 13, a telling statistic. Is that a beard that Big Marty's sporting these days, John? Yes, it is, Arthur. He's got as much hair there as he has on top. <laughs> <laughs> as Jason Smith overran the pass from his dummy half and went forward. It was almost as though the referee reacted to the crowd. It's a very uh, close ball. Now he's mixing with the fibros now. He's got to look like them. <laughs> Scrum screwing around. On the Balmain feed. See, this is a situation. I don't know what he's going to rule here. It looks as though the Balmain side has collapsed. But they should take a leaf out of the rugby book. Once a, once a scrum goes past the uh, 180, they should reform it. Yeah, fair enough. The, the contest certainly changes, doesn't it? Once it gets to that position, screwing right around. Here's Jordy Peets. Mitch Newton on the field for the Dogs. Mark Brokenshire and Ewan McGrady originally named as fresh reserves for this game, but both pulled out with injuries, knee injuries, I believe. And Mitch Newton included as the fresh reserve. Goodwin puts it down. Coming up quickly on him was Corcoran. It was a tremendous hit, but uh, that was a planned move there. But the decoys were useless. They didn't fool anyone, John. Now you look like you're going to get the ball. They just use themselves as decoys. Big tackle by Jim Dimmick, lifting Martin Masella. Sinclair goes in amongst the forwards. That was great defence by Simon Gillies there. Sinclair plays it forward and draws the penalty. Well, the markers were up there, but not directly in front of him, according yes. to referee Ward, at least. Well, Simon Gillies, he's come up with a great tackle, got off his line, completed the tackle. But uh, Sinclair, good work by him. He's got up very quickly. Left the two tacklers on the deck, played the ball forward, and Gillies was in an offside position. A couple of replacements, Warren Steve Edmed, Bernard Carroll on for Gaia and McVeigh. Two of the big men get a rest. Mark Gaia hasn't played a lot of football during the trials. He was injured. Uh, pretty good tactics with Tendergo. Munro goes up the setup. Balmain leading Canterbury, 12 points to two. Nine minutes till the break. Edmed gets into the action quickly. And Steve Edmed wouldn't appreciate being on the bench either. Marcella, who's worked very hard. Ninth hit up for Martin Marcella. Edmed. With Steve Roach out of the side, I'm sure Steve Edmed would be looking to cement a first grade spot. Up it goes on the last from Will Robinson. Luke Goodwin waits, jumps, can't hang on to it. Balmain, have they got it? The referee says 
it was pushed forward to Canterbury. And that was great work by Simon Gillies. He gave Luke Goodwin great protection. Yeah, Brasher was certainly after that ball. He did well to hurt him away from it. 18 metres out from their own posts. It's Mitch Newton for Canterbury. Been a fast game, a fairly torrid pace. Plenty of heavy defence. And there's no doubt that the captaincy has certainly helped Paul Siro. I've never seen him this involved in a match. As good one's kick in the Elias diving attempt to tackle. Down to Brasher. With Morvan Edwards alongside him. Terry Lamb Very comes in a little high. The referee says it was across the chest. Lamb had a quick look towards the touch judge as he got up. Crowd hooting, but referee warning no doubt that it was a fair tackle. There's no doubt with the new rule being enforced with the high tackle situation. That some of these players will have to change their technique. And I would say that one player in particular might be Terry Lamb. He has a tendency to get up around the head. Sinclair kicks ahead. He's the chase as Graham Lyons pushes Jason Williams out of his road. No right for Lyons to do that. Williams can do what he likes. Toad through. The penalty has gone to Canterbury. Graham Lyons argue that he has held back in the play the ball area. Lyons penalised for kicking prematurely and for not being directly in front either. Referee giving both signals. He's certainly right on the count of not being directly in front of the man playing the ball. Graham Lyons given a chance by Balmain to resuscitate his career, which seemed to be going nowhere at Penrith after some fine displays earlier in his career. There Balmain, he is on the far wing. Balmain appear to be moving up a lot quicker than they did last year. Their line is Terry Lamb searching for a gap. Yeah, the inside pass was there, John, but no support. They're moving up very quickly, Balmain. Goodwin steps, gets inside Robinson, throws it out the back. That was a speculator, a lamb. Jason Williams on the far wing calling for the kick ahead. There seems to be a lack of urgency in Canterbury's play. Last tackle. Goodwin shoots for the touchline. That's a very neat kick. Finds touch just three metres out. Cool and well directed. Yeah, beautiful kick here as uh, Luke Goodwin just rolls the ball over, turns it over to the side, and the ball rolling end on end just inside the five metre touchline. Just Canterbury signing quite a few players. They did lose, lose the experienced Bruce Maguire and showed the door to Troy Clark. Also to some other less regular first grade talent like Sean Skelton, Jason McLean and the younger McGrady brothers. Four of Balmain's main signings for the season in action in this game. Gaia, Lyons, Corcoran and Edwards. Shane Boyd also signed from Penrith. Along with losing Steve Roach and Gary Jack, they also lost John Elias, James Grant and David Brooks. So some experience lost by Balmain, but it's not showing out there at the moment. They're full of direction and enthusiasm. John Martin Marcel has been a great workhorse for the side. Well, he was last year. He's playing lock forward last year, but... He just provides him with a very mobile front row. And then there's a good set of five for Balmain. And again, this is three times the six tackle that floundered in the kicking section. Alan Jones wouldn't be pleased with that. I think that uh, Canterbury are making a, a mistake by not trying to get a bit of go forward. As we see Gordy Peets duck out of the dummy half area. Good yards. Four and a half minutes till half time. This is a good chance for Canterbury. Just inside the 20 metre line. A try before half-time would certainly boost the Bulldogs. Mitch Newton. He's a big man, but not all that quick off the mark, Newton. Needs to hit it going flat out. Dimmock. Gillies. Inside to Jason Smith. Ten metres out. Here they go with Jordy Peets. Looking inside, his arms were wrapped up just in time. The referee, in fact, says he was tackled. The man off the ball was tackled without the ball. Quick tap, Lamb. I just wonder whether he made the right decision there, John. We'll soon know. Yep, 
Give it four more, Arthur. Polamada says it was the right decision. Terry Lamb, the skipper, took the quick tap with Balmain's defence stretched. Two tackles later, Polamada rewards his captain's initiative and Balmain continue to lead, but now by 12 points to six. First try of the match to Canterbury. One pass wide, Polamada just got outside Brasher and the rest of them couldn't cover the small hole. Back close to the line, he was always a chance. Yeah, very simple try here, but uh, just possession just counting. It's the first time that uh, Canterbury have put together a number of uh, a set of plays and they received a reward here. Some great play by Geordie Peets initially. Well, I wonder if Tim Brasher thought that he could intercept and go the length because he moved up out of the line very quickly and that just upset the rest of the defensive line. Craig Polamata, the try, captained the Australian schoolboys rugby union team in 1990. But he made his mark last year with Canterbury and seems to have cemented the halfback spot in front of the challenge from, amongst others, Kevin Moore and Ewan McGrady. In fact, I wonder what the or what 1993 holds for Ewan McGrady, such a talented, brilliant player that we saw last year. He wasn't happy in the fullback spot. Will he be just a bench man? Gavin Hill. Hooks it to the left. Not a good looking kick at all. Didn't hit it at all well. Balmain lead by six points. Two minutes till half time. Well, the Tigers in no hurry. Yeah. Calculated gamble by Terry Lambert. Brasher at fault there came right up out of the line. But a gamble by Terry Lambert. His 14th season in first grade has come off for the Bulldogs 12 6. So they're within striking distance. I suppose we go back, John. You have to look back at that poor kick by Betty Elias just going out on the full. Yeah, well, coaches always have a, that sort of aspect, don't they, Arthur? You just look back and you see where it all started from. Brasher drives it down to Lamb. Gillies brings it back. Jim Dimmick joining Canterbury from West this season. Good utility player. Mitch Newton. Well, for the possession they've had and the mistakes they've made, I think 12-6, they'll be going in a little more contented now. I think they can turn that around in the second half. Darren Smith wearing the headgear. Ten metres short of halfway. Geordie Peets makes good ground. Five tackles used by Canterbury. As Luke Goodwin kicking down towards Graham Lyons. Lyons showed tremendous speed when Sinclair made the intercept. Lyons coming right through to join Sinclair and beating all of the Canterbury chasers as they tried to haul the big centre back. Bernard Carroll in centre field. Carroll, the 22-year-old Balmain junior. Been with the Tigers for four years from the Dundas club. Jason Sinclair, a good run. Just one off the ruck, trying to worry his way through the forwards. Now Will Robinson, under pressure from Gill. He's got his kick in on the last. Luke Goodwin took his eye off it. It's the hands that were feeling for the football, not the eyes. Balmain up in front of the referee, but he doesn't look out wide and they creep up. Mitch Newton as the halftime siren sounds. And that is it for the first 40 minutes of this game. A spirited encounter, the Balmain fans uh, on their feet. Balmain They're pleased with that performance. But Balmain scoring two tries. Canterbury coming one back with one just before half time. Canterbury looking for a better second half. Balmain happy to continue. The Tigers leading at half time by 12 points to six. This is your Saturday afternoon of sports, bringing you live rugby league action at its best on ABC, your national network. We're at Canterbury and Balmain, but let's take a look at the prospects for all of the clubs for this season. Few of the clubs have bought proven top-class buyers, and most of them are going to rely on young talent to improve this season. Now, if we go through them as they finished in 1992, this is the way I see them stacking up. The Broncos begin their Premiership defence with virtually the same established players. With competition for places hot, they'll be hungry again. 
Alan Langer and Glenn Lazarus are the keys in what shapes up as the team to catch. Last year's grand finalists, St George, have lost some very good, experienced backs, but have retained a strong lineup. There's every reason to think they'll go well again, but no reason to think they'll go better. Illawarra has lost some depth, but has gained Australian second rower Bob Lindner. Much will depend on whether Ian Russell overcomes his severe hamstring injury. Russell's attack adds the icing to a solid team with an excellent home ground record. Newcastle has retained its formidable squad, losing Ashley Gordon but signing Jason Martin. The likes of Matthew Rodwell and Brad Godden should be even better players and the Knights' guaranteed wins at home will be right up there. West's playing strength appears to be marginally reduced. Of more concern is a doubt whether the Magpies have the potential to improve, but with Terry Hill firing, they'll still be a tough nut to crack. East's front runners for much of the past two seasons will be hoping the arrival of Martin of Fire will improve their finish to this season. They'll still be overly dependent on Gary Freeman, but hooker Wayne Marshall back from injury will be handy. Manly have lost several classy players, including Michael O'Connor, and a last-minute change of coach in Bob Fulton for the unwell Graham Lowe may be unsettling. With Jeff Tooby out injured, the Sea Eagles are one club who look fragile. Penrith has had a major shake-up, which may be a good thing after last year's traumas. They'll field some very talented players. The form of Greg Alexander will largely determine whether they make the semis or just miss out. North's under new coach Peter Louis will have a fresh spirit and more attacking attitude. They'll be a danger, but it'll take a fit and confident Peter Jackson for the Bears to make the five. Canberra finished 12th last year with a poor defensive record. In 93, they're hoping Kiwi forwards John Lomax and Quentin Pongia will strengthen their forwards and their star backs will stay free of injury. The representative season will deplete the Raiders, but they should scrape into the five and then give the grand final a shake. With so many young players, Cronulla may improve, but it's hard to see them being a major force. Souths may pick up in defence, but will their exciting attack be as sharp without Craig Coleman to organise? With a major doubt over Brett Kenny, the Eels look destined to remain in the basement. Finally, the Gold Coast, with Wally Lewis now off the field, will be competitive, but not threaten the top five. So, after that brief look, here's my long-range top five. Brisbane to chase another minor premiership, Newcastle to be hot on their heels, St George to be up there again, Canberra and Illawarra. Easts, Penrith and Canterbury should be in the race till the last round, and I wouldn't discount West, Balmain or Norths. The remaining five will win their share of games, but it's hard to see them being there when the whips are cracking. There's a lot of football between uh, now and the semi-finals, but Arthur, I guess you disagree with uh, my predictions on the Sharks' future. Now, we're pretty confident we're going to do something this year. There's no doubt you're right with the Broncos. They're the yardstick for everyone. Well, we've certainly seen a spirited first half of football. Let's have a look at these statistics as they stand. At half-time, the number of tackles made by Canterbury, 126 to Balmain's 94. Overall errors, including the lot, missed tackles, handling errors, Canterbury 22 to Balmain's 14. Penalties have gone 8-5 to the Bulldogs, scrums 5-1 to Balmain, none against the feed. The metres gained dead even after that full 40 minutes. Time in possession, Balmain have had it for an extra four minutes and they lead by six points. So I suppose you could say that Canterbury had their problems, they were in their own quarter for a long time, but around the time, well, been between those two tries scored when Terry Lamb was off the field, one of them an intercept, they looked a little rattled. Well, they, no doubt that they did miss uh, Terry Lamb. He went off there for about 20 well, minutes or so, but uh, they turned over quite a bit of possession. A lot of their problems were self-inflicted, but I thought they got their act together in the last 10 minutes and uh, they always looked threatening to Balmain. Certainly hurts when a uh, player races 80 metres when you're on the attack on the opposition's uh, 20 metre line. Well, about that time, I thought they were starting to make some holes up Balmain's middle, but all of a sudden, as I said, it's a cruel game, rugby league. Uh, good luck to Jason Sinclair. He got out of his line. The uh, bad ball was thrown, and he won the race to the line. Balmain kicking game as the Tigers come back onto the field. The Balmain kicking game on that fifth tackle, as Johnny Beard uh, pointed out a couple of times, just looked a little ragged. Uh, 
Well, I mean, that, Brian Smith's not out there, but he isn't going to be out there unless uh, he comes on as a replacement later. Well, they've got a lot of options, haven't they? They've got David Vasari there, they've got uh, Robinson at full Robinson at the halfback, but Benny elected to kick from the dummy half area, which I don't disagree with. It's the ideal position that puts everyone on side. But uh, you're right there, but they did pay the penalty for a poor kick by by uh, Benny Elias. Uh, just after that, uh, Geordie Peach got out of the dummy half area, made some great yards, and they elected to take the quick tap, and uh, they came up with the try. No doubting the power of the Balmain forwards. They've really been firing up. Siren and leading the way. Geyer has been involved in everything. McVie and Masella hitting it up. Uh, you know, what is it? How many well, hit-ups now for Derek McVie? Well, Derek McVie's had eight. Martin Masala has been really impressive. He's come up with 11 hit-ups. But uh, the other side of the coin, too, is that uh, Jason Sinclair has been doing his, his share in there also. He's been coming in doing a Michael Beattie. And uh, he's been very impressive, Jason Sinclair. And leading the tackle counts at this stage, David Vasari with 17 tackles, Jim Dimmick with 19 tackles for their respective sides. And down on the side, Johnny Pidd, what did the coaches have to tell us? Well, Canterbury obviously going to address that possession problem. Too many mistakes from the Canterbury side, and they'll be asked to uh, alter that aspect of their game. Uh, Balmain, of course, their kicking game has uh, been disrupted by some very good uh, chasing by the Canterbury side, so they'll be looking to give themselves more room with their kicking game. Other than that, Alan Jones thought their control was pretty good. Balmain had a pretty good pattern going in that first 40 minutes. Will they continue? Guy are met by some solid defence. Mitch Newton in with the shoulder. Simon Gillig's there as well. And Warren McVeigh and uh, Guy are back on the field. So Carroll and Edmed back on the bench. Well, there's an early chance here as we see McVeigh uh, just knock the ball on. So early chance here for Canterbury. They put a few more wrinkles on the coach's frown and borrow it, don't they, Arthur? <laughs> Once again, you we can't say, make mistakes hey. like that. Two or three tackles coming out of your quarter. Well, you can't give them good field position, and, uh, field position and possession. Darren Smith, almost outside Sinclair, just managed to hang on to him. And that was Derek McVeigh, all side two metres in front of Eddie Ward, and he didn't do anything about it. 18 metres out. Jason Smith inside to Dimmick, and he found a bit of space. They didn't move up on the inside. There's nothing all that fancy about it. Lamb, he swept upon. That's a great tackle by Geyer. He left the ground. Peets going towards the posts. Last tackle coming up for Canterbury. Lamb on the right. Drives it, trying to get it in. In fact, he, did he get it back again? Good one's come up with it. It's still the last. Hoists it high. And Brasher chases and goes for it. And everyone left it for him. Yeah, tremendous reflexes by Terry Lamb, but unfortunately the, the pass went astray and Luke Goodwin had to put the bomb up once again. It, it wasn't as judged to, to be played at the ball. Munro swings out of the tackle. He might have been entitled to keep going. Well, that was a situation where the, where the play of the ball was in process. Those barkers should have been ruled offside when they tackled Benny Elias. Sirenen, Canterbury getting up very quickly. Referee Ward is back nine metres from the play of the ball area. Mistake made by Vasari. Did he knock it back? No, he knocked it forward. And once again, great pressure by Simon Gillies. Hand over. So a chance for Canterbury. Balmain kicked the ball away and Canterbury get a penalty right in front. Balmain trying to slow it down, kick the ball away. It was a handover and now Canterbury can shoot for the two and get well, within four points. You often wonder whether that uh, doesn't deserve to be uh, a sin well, It was a very useful attacking position for Canterbury, wasn't it? Canterbury now leading the penalties, 9-5. And getting a run of them late in the first half, Canterbury, to take play down towards Balmain's end. Gavin Hill could throw this over. 
And he puts it right between the posts. With Eddie Ward telling the Balmain players to stay back their 10 metres, Skill was about to move in. So the gap closes. Balmain leading Canterbury 12 points to 8. Just three minutes into the second half. And John, do you see the game breaking wide open, or is it going to stay pretty tight right to the death? Well, uh, Balmain's had pretty good control, except that kicking on the six tackles brought them down. Canterbury looking forward to a bit more possession. Warren, uh, it's hard to say at this stage, of course, it's very tight. But we... uh, with a bit more possession, I think Canterbury can do some things. With their problems with their kicking game, can you see Brian Smith being brought into the fray? Well, I mean, he's got to, they've got to just stand, just adjust themselves. I think there are plenty of good kickers there and just get a yeah. little bit deeper. But Brian Smith, the best kicker in the club, right. maybe he could be used to be pulled up all right. Yeah, I agree with that, but uh, I'm just thinking Jason Sinclair, he seems to be a much better disciplined player these days. Yeah, well, it's early days yet. I hope he is because he's a very entertaining player. Well, I think it's Gavin Hill is hurt. Just wondering about this tackle here, how high it is. Oh. Well, there's your answer. Right across the well, nose. Well, you've got a linesman there right alongside the linesman. You've got a referee and they both miss it. Well, it could have been shoulder. The contact could have been made with the shoulder, but it's, it's what I'm saying is that... And McVeach comes in with another solid one. Nothing illegal about that, but after your, your point is right. After some of the uh, penalties we've seen for high tackles recently where players did nothing, no real damage at all, that one certainly was high, the previous tackle. The uh, children sitting on top of the bench behind the goalpost at the southern end of the ground. Can you get right back Gavin Hill and is groggy. Right he wasn't hit across the nose with a tissue, was he? He copped a full-blooded shoulder. Well, you're wondering whether it is the shoulder or whether it is the, the, as you said, the bicep came into contact. Here's right that tackle again, inside. front on. He's going the wrong way there. <laughs> I think we saw it pretty clearly the first time. That's put Hill off the field. And Martin Bella comes on. Bella, who was rested when Mitch Newton came on. Peets gets the kick away. Rasher knocked that forward from the hands. Well, I thought it was very lucky. That was de definitely a knock on, I thought. Well, certainly from where we both said that looked to be knocked on by Brasher. So a let off. Sinclair. Tim Brasher, the Australian fullback, current Australian fullback. He'll have to hold on to that during the coming test series against New Zealand. And Masella working very hard. That's his 12th hit up, and we're only just over the halfway mark. Both sides starting to encroach the five metres or the 10 metres as we know it. Sirinan loses the ball as he held it high. Basari dives back. I thought Basari had dived on it. Six ball. And he has. Well, the ref, Eddie Ward, was going to give it to Terry Lamb and had a second look. And you can bet that the Balmain players were screaming for him to have a second check on it. On the halfway. Big zero down with a, an ankle injury. Elias looks inside. There was no one there. Out wide, it's Corcoran. Sirenen hobbles back to catch up with the play. Elias on the blind side. John, I suppose you have to give Sinclair a rap too. The, he seems to have kept McCracken very quiet. Yeah, McCracken hasn't had a great deal of opportunities. There's Brasher with a kick through and a chase, but Goodwin has it well covered. Goodwin takes off, got away from Sinclair, stopped on a sixpence and he's away. Tremendous <laughs> play by Goodwin. He just stopped dead, changed direction and took off. Tremendous evasion skills. Sinclair was the first who was right after him. Looked as if he might get in, but when he got around Sinclair, he stood up three of them and took off. Geordie Beach, uh, Peach once again finding some room up the middle of the ruck. Darren Smith, the Queensland origin player. Polamata, Newton standing wide. He dummies to land, goes over the top of him. Yeah, that was a definite chance there. They had the numbers, but unfortunately, Jared McCracken couldn't hold what was a very tough pass. It was up a bit high, but he had plenty of time to think about it. Yeah, it was soft enough. It should have been taken. And it really was an opportunity. He was unmarked as Newton had thrown the pass over the top of Terry Lamb. Lamb was attracting all of the defence. They came away from McCracken. Balmain leading 12 points to eight. What a good scrum that was. Vasari. 
They'll remain in a handy position with five tackles to come. Munro. Matt Munro in the lock forward spot. Robinson. Guile wide. The defence was out there looking after him. And the first man in low was Geordie Peets. Lamb went high and wrapped him up. Serenin. Just a little flat-footed at that time, Serenin. And he's put the ball on the deck. And Canterbury have got it. And Betty Elias pays the penalty here, trying to rake the ball back from the tackle player. He's saying that he's leaning over the tackle player, making contact with the man to play the ball. Well, he hasn't got a case, Benny. And McCracken was standing right over the top of Elias. Almost looked tempted to give him a nudge. Canterbury with the, winning the penalties, 2-1, to one, it's 10-5. They're getting up very quickly, uh, Balmain. They're very spread, but Arthur, aren't they? I'm just having a look. Like Eddie Ward, he can't referee the game from the ruck area. He's got to get back, keep them apart. What's a better 10 metres? Martin Massell is out here on the right wing at the moment. Five metres from the sideline. Good work by Basari. Canterbury had a back line, but David Basari got up on Lamb quickly, cut him off. Yep. Now Newton... And Basari leading the tackle count with 24. Ben Elias is second with 13. And there's Basari with another one. Lamb. Kicks ahead. Coming through quickly is Dallas. Brasher gets back. It reminds you a lot of Kerry Boasted, uh, Dallas, John. Oh, gee, he's been impressive in the preseason. Outstanding talent. Bullfrog's got another one. Yes, he certainly has. He knows how to, st how to steer them. <laughs> he gets enough of them. He gets around enough too. Yeah, but I hate to see his expense account. Elias <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow manages to get away from Jason Smith. Sinclair. And once again, they've put pressure on Sinclair's kick and they've come up with another poor kick on the last tackle. It was Geordie Peets who came through and Jason Sinclair. Arthur, that's registered kick number five. But they don't leave themselves any options, John. Sinclair was obviously the man. Will Robinson went into dummy half. He was another option, but I thought they picked up the wrong option there. Well, Canterbury's done it very well, haven't they? Really put pressure on that kicker. Still only four points in it. 30 minutes to go in the match. Newton. And there's Basari with another one. In amongst the forwards. No wonder he's getting through plenty of defence. Newton loses it. The referee said it had nothing to do with Basari. And Darren Center on for Jason Smith. Darren Center's in 26. A very good player, this kid, John. He's got some great skills. We see the ball. Mitch Newton being tackled there. Basari's all over him here and holding him back. As you can see, the left hand there holding the jersey down. So maybe he did have something to do with it. Masari from the scrum win. Chris Anderson has plenty of good players to call on in reserve grade. Three quarters of the reserve grade side have played first grade at some stage. And Darren Sent is one of them. That was a mismatch and it's Terry Lamb saying that Big Zero put the elbow into him. McVie goes over the top of Peets but couldn't get through Dimmick. Elias wants to play it down the other end. Goodwin. Doesn't have a lot of support. Jason Williams tries to get back there now. Goodwin with a nice swerve to get past Will Robinson. Lamb saying, come on, ref, let him play it. Polamata, they've got an overlap, but he goes back inside, Simon Gillies. Sinclair oh, got up on him quickly. That was great work by Sinclair. Polamata misread that. There's Sinclair in on Bella, who lobs it back. Centre picks it up. Dimmick. There's not many cracks in this Balmain defence. McVie in the road that time. Darren Smith up the middle. Well, every time they take the ball up, they seem to make uh, pretty easy yards, Canterbury, but I think they're too worried about just shifting the ball wide. Bella. Six Canterbury. tackle coming up. Lamb goes to the line, puts it high. He's going to hit Brasher hard. In fact, they both contest the ball. Six more. 
And somehow Lamb has managed to come up with it. And he gets the penalty as Geyer won't release him. Lamb wants a quick tap. Takes it. We're all inside the 10. I've got to get another penalty here, surely. Well, referee Ward lets it go. Now they're only 18 metres out. Canterbury need a try to level the scores. Peets goes in a dummy half. Goes himself. And this is the bloke that's given Balmain more troubles than anyone, really. Geordie Peets. Lamb on the right. Quick pass to Dimmick. Sirenin with a good tackle. They had the overlap. Oh. Sirenin didn't, didn't give him much time to think. Now the penalty goes to Balmain. And it's against Canterbury for incorrectly playing the ball. There it was, Jim Dimmick, the man who went so close that in the earlier tackle. This is where the ball should have gone on. They had a three-man overlap out wide. Yeah, yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, quick hands would have been handy. But I'm just saying he's entitled to play. Look, yeah. they're climbing all over him. Eddie, you got it wrong. Well, on that occasion, you're dead right because Munro came in late after he was already tackled. I mean, the tackle was completed before okay, Munro arrived. Right. Even if Munro... I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> sure, and uh, Edmed on for Masala. Edmed does him in 40. There he is, Steve Edmed, steaming ahead. Munro now. That was a crucial decision by Eddie Ward because Canterbury right on the attack, only two metres from the Balmain line, needing a four-pointer to level the scores. Just short of halfway now, the Tigers. Elias feeding the dummy and then putting the kick, but straight to Goodwin. That wasn't such a good kick. Now, well read by Goodwin. It's a high tackle. He steps back inside Graham Lines. Graham Lines will be called out here. I'm just wondering how high that tackle was. Terry Lamb obviously saying a few words as well. Yes, it's... Uh... Look, as if it was contact with the neck which is against the law, of course, the high tackle rule this season. In fact, coming in last season, says that you can't make contact with the neck or head intentionally, carelessly or recklessly, which just about covers any contact with the neck or head. Penalty is now 12-6 in favour of the Bulldogs. As Bella, he's a no-frills footballer, Martin Bella. But he does the job, and he certainly must wear down the defence. Yeah, his football world's just a few square metres in front of his nose, Warren. And he does it well. Alan Jones looking a little concerned. He knows that Canterbury are getting into a bit of stride here. Lamb. Polamounter. The defence read it well with Munro and Sirenin on the inside. Now Lamb holds it up, gives it to Smith. He tries to go through the tackle of Gaia, who holds him. Enough for Elias to finish it off. Last tackle, Lamb. Plenty of chases coming through. The bouncer want to be good for Brasher. And he takes it over the dead ball line, so it's a goal line dropout. Yeah, tremendous kick by Terry Lamb. Benny Elias put a lot of pressure on him, but uh, he still had the awareness to get the little grubber in behind and uh, Beautifully placed kick just into the in-goal area, forcing Brasher to take that over into touch. And Balmain in no hurry to take this drop out. They're in front. They're trying to play the game at their own pace. Quick look at the errors. Missed tackles starting to even up. Balmain missing a few in this half. Handling errors 6-3, more by the Tigers. Loss, losses of possession dead even. They've had to do a lot of tackling the last five or ten minutes, Balmain, so... Yeah, the uh, weight of possession starting to tell a little. And just to explain that statistic you just saw, handling errors as distinct from lost possession. That's just handling errors which affect the attack of the team without handing possession over to the opposition. All of those are counted in the lost possession category. Good defence by Robinson. They didn't have the numbers there, did they, John? It was just a poor play. They shouldn't have gone on with that play yeah. because... Running across for all Arthur. So that they were just sliding, drifting. Easy, mate. Newton oh. got the pass away to Smith. Smith pushes off a weak tackle by Geyer. Now kicks ahead, but he was in traffic. 
Yeah, and McVie comes away with it for Balmain. It was a bit ambitious. There are a lot better options than what he did, though. If the ball goes to the right, they had to put his numbers out to the right. I'm not so sure it was the last either, was it? No. And a little bit of slow motion football as Smith pushed away from Gaia. Maybe both teams are just starting to tire a little. McCracken moves up in solid defence all over the top of Edwards. They're moving up in force now, the Canterbury side. They're having trouble digging out of their own line. They're marching up their own line, Balmain. McVie. They're making heavy with it. This is where Benny Elias has to get a good kick in, or Will Robinson. Robinson under pressure, but he got the kick away. Darren Setter came flying through on him. Oh, did Goodwin knock that on? The referee gave him the benefit of the doubt. That might even up for the early one on Brasso. He's Goodwin got a straight away. through. He's got some pull on the outside. Goes back inside. Dallas backing up. And Dallas will get on in the posts. From his own side of halfway, Luke Goodwin cut through. And suddenly, he split right through. Once he, he got his head through, the front line. Line players argue that they were, there was a knock on. Well, there may well have been too. We'll have another look at it. But whether or not they should have played the whistle, maybe a bit of arguing going Jason's on there. Was. there. Jason's just... Well, even hard to tell from this distance whether he knocked it on. But Benny, it? Benny Elias should have made the tackle. And once he went through the front line, away he went and Brett Dallas, chased by Graham Lyons, Let's have another look at this knock-on. There was the kick by Will Robinson. Was it knocked on right back upfield here by Luke Goodwin? Knocked back, knocked back. I think it was knocked back. You reckon not? We're not going to change the decision. <laughs> I thought he knocked it back on the slow-mo replay. But regardless, the tackle should have been made on Luke Goodwin. But a great break by Luke Goodwin. We see the backup play there, support by Brett Dallas. A well deserved try. And to Brett Dallas, who won the rugby league sprint at the Botany Gift last month. Over 75 metres, he outpaced, among others, Parramatta's uh, Odin Ryan, Lee Odin Ryan, who everyone thought was the fastest man around after beating Martin Afire last year over 100. And Dallas beat him, so it means that he is quicker than you and I, Arthur. Just a dash. <laughs> Just a 75 metre dash. Terry Lamb right in front, and all of a sudden, Canterbury hit the lead. They have a trial for much of the match. Canterbury lead Balmain 14 points to 12. Terry Lamb with 10 stitches in his cheek puts him in front. Yes, well, here's the kick downfield. Just inept defence by the uh, Balmain chasing team allowed Goodwin to step between a couple of defenders, Benny Elias and Surinan. He sees daylight, steps off the right. Now, puts himself in the hole again. And of course, Brett Dallas, he's only got two speeds. Here he comes, there he goes, over for the try. And Balmain in front of the kicker from the restart of play. A basic penalty which so many teams seem to infringe. Most of the time they get away with it. But Eddie Ward has caught them, and the penalty right on the halfway line goes to Canterbury, the last thing that Balmain needed. Well, Eddie Ward, I've got to give you a pat on the back <laughs> for that one. Well, it's, it's about been, time, isn't it, John? It's been 18 months coming, Arthur. Try about five years. I'm just, uh, oh, and Lamb's decided to take the tap. Just getting back to that try. He pointed out Benny uh, Elias, Mr. Yeah, Taylor, Benny was on I the think, inside. I, I think thought that he... I know that he, used, he stepped back inside more than Edwards, but I thought that Benny should have picked him. up. Yeah, should have. When he once he stepped back inside more than Edwards, he should have picked him up. Now, yeah, uh, Arthur, that kickoff may have set a trend for the weekend or for the rest of the season. I hope they take a stand on that because it's been blatantly exposed every week, every kickoff. Well, if I can say one thing, John, Cronulla certainly don't get in front of the kicker. <laughs> well, I saw it last night. Yeah, but you've had a lot of practice. <laughs> Even in last night's game, I saw a player get away with it. Here's Canterbury losing the ball. Well, they've given Balmain back the chance after getting the penalty at halfway. The possession given back. Basari. A great tackle. Plenty boy. of time left in this game. 17, nearly 18 minutes to go. They expected a stirring struggle, and that's what these two teams are giving us. Oh, an interesting decision good hit by Gillies. Good hit by Gillies. 
great hit, but an interesting decision there. Terry Lamb, as we see, a good all played by Steve Edmund to Benny Elias, but Terry Lamb blow, blowing up as Jamie Corcoran used him to, uh, used Terry Lamb as jumper to pull himself up with. Steve Edmund crosses the halfway line. McVie shrugs off the tackle, turns inside. Elias to Robinson. Robinson. Oh, oh Surinan gets a low pass and can't hang on. Did they have numbers there? It was just a little low for the tall man, Paul Surinan. He's hey, disappointed. Mc, that McVie's a handful, always twisting in a tackle, very strong round the hips. And here's the incident. With, they were going to spread the ball with numbers, and Ciro put it down. The three mistakes made. John both sides very willing to throw the ball around. Uh, might be just a matter of the side that uh, the passes stick with in the yep. last 15 minutes or so. Three mistakes made in quick succession by both teams. Two by Balmain, one by Canterbury. Well, there's a lot of danger players out there, so the side in possession's got ample chance because of the talent. Darren Centre. Terry Lamb puts it down and slow to recover. Benny Elias darts in, but everyone from Canterbury was asleep. No one made an attempt to get anywhere near it. Paul Sherman down and back play. Right on the halfway line. Edmund. He's relatively fresh. Surinan going towards the sideline. Will Robinson in and away. Stepped nicely past Simon Gillies. Geyer holds it up inside for Sinclair. He gets a pass looking for Robinson. Dimmick intercepts and comes back upfield. Good play by Balmain. The final pass was a little too risky. Now Tim Brasser is going to be called out. There's Jim Dimmick hurt in the tackle. That was a catch that had to be made. Was Jimmy Dimmick taking that intercept? Or was it Brasher or Matt Munro? Puts in something illegal in this tackle. It looked like a couple of uppercuts from Brasher, whether it just looked like it. Timmy, you should get back to fullback. Let the forwards do that. He looked like he was swatting flies. <laughs> Unless he was raking at the football, I don't know, but it, uh, it looked like he was putting a little bit of work just underneath the chin. And that inside pass from Guy showed how effective it can be. Jason Sinclair, good support play on the inside. Canterbury now 30 metres out from the Balmain line. Canterbury leading 14 points to 12. Darren Smith, who hasn't looked all that sharp in the centres. He's spent plenty of times in, time in the forwards over the last couple of seasons. This is better work by Balmain, by Canterbury. They're just taking the ball up. They're much more effective. When we see the big forwards taking that ball up. Polamata. 18 metres out. See a field goal? No, Terry Lamb's going down the blind side. Puts a little kick in, it's picked up again by Balmain, and away they go, it's Jamie Corcoran over the halfway. Across comes the cover defence of Darren Smith. Manages to slow him down, and they eventually put him on the ground. Terry Lamb all over him, just got off in time for the referee not to give the penalty. Sinclair. Elias. Numbers out wide. Gaia. Munro gives it to Lyons. Will he kick ahead? He goes himself. Looks inside. Still alive. It came backwards. Referee now says it was knocked on. Yeah, great scrambling defence by Canterbury, but uh, a definite chance there is Lyons. I thought the Blinds would have been better off just taking the tackle. That was a speculator. He's thrown back inside here. Did it? Was it knocked on here? It was kicked forward, but it was definitely was knocked forward. Well, I thought it went back at that point, whether oh, the second player knocked it on. I, I believe it was knocked on. Oh. Well, the scrum win to Canterbury. And Terry Lamb's kick rebounding and picked up by Jamie Corcoran, who took play down the other end. Now a bad piece of football. And Paul Serenin deridingly slaps Simon Gillies on the head and says, well done, mate. You've coughed up possession, you've given us a chance. Well, the poor old coaches, they're at the whims and temperaments and actions of the players. Both teams making mistakes. Will Robinson now, real chance for Balmain, only 15 metres out. McVie, he's been a handful. 
Most of the Balmain forwards have been. And that was his 15th hit up, Derek McVie, causing Canterbury trouble all afternoon. And that might have been a set of knees in the back. Elias finally getting it away in the end of Sinclair. Now it's Edmed. And the Canterbury defence being right. tested here. Tremendous tackle by Paul Amanda on Edmund. Guy. Guy goes himself. He's long and tall with that reach of his. Well, this will be a head and a feed all to Balmain again. I think that was on about the fourth or fifth tackle. Guy rolled onto his back in the end as Lou Goodwin helps him up. But uh, such a tall man, and with that long reach of his, he was always a chance. And rolled over. Four Canterbury tacklers. Bella Dimmock amongst them. 10 4 the scrums to Balmain. With Munro going the blind side. This will be great defence by Canterbury if they can hold out here. Brasser. He tried to get on the outside of Dimmock, but the pack and plays him off. That was a play the ball that was off. He was still on the deep. And Brasher claiming that he was held down. Well, you know, that's a problem when the referee's not in there in the ruck area. Well, they're being held down, so, you know, what are you supposed to do? I know the rule states well, that you have to get to your feet. Well, I agree with you. At least we can say that the ref is consistent because he gave the same penalty against Jim Dimmock when Canterbury were on the attack down the other end. But on both occasions, I but would think that they're a bit hard done but by. But I always maintain that the referee should be behind the ruck area. The penalties now going Canterbury's way by a mammoth total of 15 to 6. <laughs> Jordy Peace loses the balls when you think it was a cake of soap. Both teams making error after error in the last five minutes. And Jason Sinclair says, settle it down, boy, settle it down. Ten minutes to go. Balmain down by two points. Canterbury giving them every opportunity to get back to the lead. Now the penalty goes to Balmain. And it's against, who is it out there for Canterbury? Dean, now? Dean Pay. He hasn't been on the field long, and he gives what yeah. could be the match levelling penalty. He's yeah. just taken the place of Mitch Newton, Warren. Now the pressure will be on Jamie Corker and the former Canterbury player, who kicked a beauty from the sideline earlier in the game. With Canterbury leading 14 points to 12, and just under 10 minutes to go. Two from two for Corcoran to date. A little bit surprised, John, there being so, uh, such a turnover of possession. Yep, unusual. The game as tight as this, you'd think their priority were to get out of their quarter. Canterbury made two glaring errors. Just giving Balmain a chance to at least draw. With only nine minutes left. A few deep breaths to relax for Corcoran. Eyes right on that ball. Hits it well. It's a good kick under pressure. And the scores are level at 14 points all. We've got a ripper of a nine minutes to go to see who's going to get the two points here. Here we go. The Nick Friday, Phelps, Munson, Jamie, Corcoran. Well, there's no doubt now both sides will be thinking the team, the field position, and getting their field goal experts into position. So the one point will become a priority. Terry Lamb kicked two field goals last year for Canterbury. Without Brian Smith on the field, I don't know. I suppose Benny Elias might snuff a field goal for the Tigers. Luke Goodwin with the kick down to Mark Geyer. It's been an impressive effort from Geyer first up. He'll be better for this run after such a traumatic 1992, even into 93. It's been a pretty good start to the year for big Mark Geyer. 14 hit-ups for Geyer. And a bit of a yell from some of the Balmain players and the crowd as they thought a highish tackle had come in. Sirenen. Paul Sirenen, who has twice been down for the count, but he's still firing now, late in the game. Vasari with the kick. Doesn't gain a lot of ground, and Brett Dallas scoops it up. In fact, Dallas 
If he could have only heard the call, Jason Williams on the far wing was saying, race out here and join me because Balwain is short. Well, this should be a game of cat and mouse now, just eating up the tackle count. And I would think that they'd be looking forward to Lee Goodwin to getting them back down into the Tigers' red zone. Dean Pay was held up the pass to Gillies with forward. Very close. And the referee Ward deciding that it was forward, not much in it. Once again, another coach killer, John. Have a look at this beautiful pass. Pay takes it up. Here comes Gilly coming for his dead set forward. Maybe even more so. It could have even been a penalty. The little forward pass. Good call by Eddie Ward. Another mistake by Canterbury. Well, I just think that uh, Benny Elias will just direct his big forwards. Just get it downfield, boys. Get me into position. Or Basari. Or Will Robinson. But equally good defence by Canterbury. They'll be just trying to limit that field position. Still 40 metres out with Elias now. Make it 35. Will they wait till the last? Brasher. Tries to get it closer with a good run. And a fine tackle by Dimmick drives him back. Some of what he gained. Up the middle they go. The field goal's got to be coming soon. Who's behind? Will Robinson. Goes to Basari. They don't go for the field goal. And a poor kick goes straight to Jason Williams. The Balmain haven't set up well for the kick on the fifth tackle all day. No matter what kind of kick. What sort, of, what sort of kick was? I thought he was trying to wait it into the end goal. The funny part, the numbers, John, the numbers were on there, the quick hands. But by the same time, you have to give a bit of credit to Canterbury's defence. Yes, they put a lot of pressure on the kickers. Well, they and they've held in there. Canterbury's defence kept Balmain at the 35 metre mark for virtually six tackles. Now Dimmock. Trying to get over the halfway line. He's starting to come into his own a little bit as the players tire. Lamb, they've already used up five tackles. Lamb goes deep. Away from Brasher. Darren Smith is chasing hard. Brasher comes across. Smith is offside. He's got to let him go 10 metres, but Lamb was the kicker. And a fine chase and tackle by Terry Lamb. He's an inspiration, Lamb. The veteran of the side. It's going so strongly at the end. Elias gets past Bella. Up the field he goes, there's no support for him. And he's buried. In fact, he slid under Luke Goodwin's tackle, but finally cleaned up. So, Elias allowed to escape by the Canterbury forwards. That could have been the crucial missed tackle. Bella was one of them, but not the only one who let Elias go through. Now, can the defence chase down the field goal this time? Last tackle, Will Robinson shoots, misses. It's a woeful shot. Oh, he put that one in the bushes off the tee. The front marker went the right way. He had all the time in the world, John. It was just a poor kick. Yes, here it is again now. Plenty of time. Off the left foot. Misdirected. The score remains. 14 points all. There's four minutes and four seconds to go. Well, Balmain have shown today. Gee, they've got some talent out there with the ball. It'll be hard to contain if they can get their defence working. I think both teams have shown that they are going to be tough to toss right through this season. At the same time, both teams have made mistakes which their coaches will be working on during the week. Dimmick. He's got a fine game, Dimmick, John. Yeah, a little quiet to start with, Arthur, but he's starting yeah. to do some things now. He's good with the ball. He's a good tradesman. He's got the goal card. Lamb from a long way out has almost got the legs he has got the legs this is is he has he got it or not referee ward has got a check with the in goal judge crucial decision here did it go yeah, over the crossbar he did what an amazing kick terry lamb was some 47 meters out when he let that go with the referee's hand in the air for the last tackle i thought lamb could only kick for distance it may have been 45 but Lamb has managed to lift this over the crossbar as a despairing Tim Brasher could only look on. And Canterbury hit the lead 15-14. And that was no doubt was his best. If you remember last season, on one occasion, Terry Lamb went for a field goal by mistake when his team were down by two points. 
In the end, you could say it cost his team the chance. There's Chris Anderson with under-21 coach Scott Tronk in front of him. His team lead by one. It's not all over yet. There's two and a half minutes to go, but Balmain have got to get the ball. That was a pearler of a kick, and Terry Land knows that his team simply have to hold the ball now. I didn't even think that Lamb was going for the post with a field goal when he got the ball. On his best day, he could only hope for that sort of a kick. And there's not much wind there. He certainly couldn't... No one could claim he had the wind behind him. And once again, he's put in a great little kick as Mark Geyer comes in. There's a confrontation between Gillies and Geyer as Geyer bumps over Terry Lamb. And they're chest to chest. So there might be a penalty back here. Just wondering. I didn't think it was all that late. After Terry Lamb kicks the ball here, just watch... Big mark coming through. Oh, had to be a penalty. Late enough, even in slow motion, Guy made very little attempt to pull out of the tackle, leading with the shoulder. Again, we remind all spectators, you are not allowed to come And vital time is lost by Balmain. It's now down to just over a minute. What do you do, John? Go for the touchline? Oh, I think I'd go for the goal. I'm just wondering if you just go, go for it and, 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 and eat up the six. Take your time about restarting. Either way, you can't fail, Arthur. There's only a minute left. Bella will take the tap, and he will not pass it. He goes a little closer to the post. Maybe I'll go for a, another field goal on the last. They'll need the men from Mars to get him up. Peets puts his head down. He's had a great game, Jordy Peets. Hello. Good, getting his acting lessons also. Centre goes close. He could be yeah. over. And Darren Centre, I think, has got a doubt he has. And that is finally it. Canterbury, if there was any doubt, have won this game. And it might rob Terry Lamb of some of the glory for that field goal. But Darren Centre putting his head down. First it was Bella. And then Geordie Peets. And then Darren Centre went low and hard, burrowing under them. Very hard to make the tackle from this close when you go low, and that's what he did took on Elias who couldn't stop him. We can see the ball being placed over the line, the momentum carried across, very reminiscent of a, a very well-known former Canterbury player, Dr. George Papanis. He would have been proud of that effort. And the full-time siren sounds with the kick still to come. And Darren Setter doing a good job, a replacement there, to put a few more points on the board and rub salt into the Balmain's wounds. But this is the man who really split a 14 all deadlock and lamb will now shoot for the conversion pushes it wide and terry lamb will walk up to shake hands with some of his balmain opponents and a smile creeps across his face and why wouldn't it might not be so happy when he looks in the mirror tonight and sees that gash in the cheekbone but i'm sure that the two points will make up for that with Canterbury defeating Balmain by 19 points to 14. And Luke Goodwin celebrates with Terry Lamb. Luke Goodwin, who had a particularly good first half. So in both teams, some very spirited performances. And who was Beetson's best? Well, here he is. Arthur's nod goes to Geordie Peets. The Canterbury hooker who worked very hard all day. Well, he certainly did his uh, direction of play around the ruck area was excellent. He ran the ball well from dummy half, and I thought he tackled particularly well. I thought he put them on the right road back to recovery. So, Jordy Peets, but uh, some other fine performances out there today. Oh, certainly was. That Terry Lamb certainly had a great game. Uh, Brett Dallas back at, uh, on the wing proved that what a find he, he's going to be. And uh, also, Luke Goodwin, I thought, played particularly well at fullback. All right, that's it for the first game of the season. We hope you enjoyed it. We're certainly glad to be back with you in 93. And next week we'll be...